Welcome to ACI, the Network Made Simple learning series. In this video, we will cover Module 2, Configuring Physical Connectivity, Chapter 3, Connecting Virtual Port Channel Servers. In the previous chapter, we learned how to configure single NIC connections to ACI using a Windows server. And now, we will use the same server to connect two active NICs to two different lift switches by enabling virtual port channel on the ACI side. Let's first start by remembering a few concepts on Virtual Port Channel, or VPC. Remember, VPC enables two switches to be seen by the layer 2 neighbors as one device, eliminating the spanning tree and providing an active-active, highly available logical path between two different switches. Before, with switches like Nexus 5000, 7000, or other boxes, we would need to cable a dedicated set of links to build the peer link between the VPC members and also a keep alive link to avoid split brain scenarios. One thing that changes with ACI, as you learn in module one, is that leaps are not cabled between them. So ACI will automatically build a virtual peer link for you running within a VXLAN tunnel between the VPC peers. Again, you do not need to configure anything for this to work, but it may be useful for you to know that this is happening behind the scenes in a specific default tenant called infra and a specific default BRF called Overlay 1. We will cover tenants, including the infra tenant, on Module 3. So, stay tuned. Let's now build our first VPC on ACI. We will go back to our golden questions to do so. The first question is, what do I want to connect to ACI? And the answer is, I want to connect the bare metal server. Therefore, I need to create a physical domain. The second question is, do I need VLANs or vSENs? And the answer is yes. I need to let VLAN 10 run on this link. So I create a static VLAN pool with VLAN 10 included. The third step is to group the created domain and its VLAN pool by creating an AEP. Let's review how to create these three steps now on the GUI. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at my settings on the Windows Server side. Let's add Ethernet 1 and Ethernet 2 links running at 1 gig to a new team and then choose a static teaming. I can see that the current status on the team reads false since we have not configured the ACI site yet. Let's perform our first three steps then a bit quicker this time, since we should know by now how to do those based on the previous chapter. One, create a physical domain. Two, create a static VLAN pool with VLAN 10. And three, create an AEP. Done. From here, we need two more steps if you remember. We need to choose on which switch and interface we will connect the server to. In our case, we want Leaf 103 and Leaf 104 on port 131 running at 1 gig to connect our server. Let's use the wizard this time to configure it. Let's go to Fabric, Access Policies, Maximize Quick Start, and select Interface and Policies. On the right side, click on the toolbox icon and click on Configure Interface. Let's select the two leaves which will be part of our VPC domain in this case 103 and 104. Now, let's select the interfaces we want to run our VPC on, in this case 131, and as you can see, the names for our leaf and interface profiles are automatically created for you. You can always adjust them if you need to. Now, let's select VPC as the interface type, and we will create a VPC policy group for it. Let's modify the policies to enable 1 gig as the bandwidth, enable CDP, and remember you must also assign the AEP you created in step 3 as part of the policy group creation. Let's click OK and we're pretty much set. Notice that the VPC pair ID value is automatically populated when you choose VPC as the interface type. This is equivalent to the VPC domain ID you would need to configure if you did it a traditional way using Annex OS. Click OK and we're done. Remember, you can always check what you configured in the Access Policies section. In this case, our switch profiles and interface profiles are there, as they were created from the wizard. And you can also check things like your VPC pair ID if you go to Policies, Switch, Virtual Port Channel Default, where you will see all your VPC pairs. As mentioned in Chapter 2 of this module, we can also verify the status of the VPC interface in the GUI by clicking on Topology, Interface, and then adding the switches you want to see in the operational mode. Or you can also click on Inventory, Fabric, select your pod, your leaf, 
and the VPC interface you want to check, and you will have immediate access to the status of that interface. Keep in mind that it may take a few seconds for the VPC to form. So, you might see a few alarms before the port becomes fully operational. If you want to make sure you did things right, go to the Faults tab after 30 seconds or so, and you should see the fault automatically transitioning from soaking to soaking clearing. Once there, everything should be good to go as you can see. You can also go directly to the CLI and execute show VPC on the corresponding leaves or even go to the server itself to verify that the connection is up. You successfully configured your first VPC on ACI. As you can see, we're doing the same thing we were doing on traditional networks, but now with a few differences and potentially with less errors. As covered before, connectivity between endpoints will only happen once we configure the logical connectivity, such as tenants and contracts. So don't expect pings to work for now. We will cover that in module three so that you can communicate anything over ACI. We learn how to configure the physical network for single and dual NIC servers using VPC. This physical network configurations may also apply not only to servers, but also to non-ACI switches, non-integrated virtual environments, and other layer two connections like server load balancers, firewalls, and others. So please keep this in mind as you will be using this every time you connect a new physical device to the ACI fabric. Remember that the physical network configuration is done only once as most of the changes usually happen at the logical connectivity level. ACI provides you with a better, simpler, and secure network, any size, anywhere, and on any cloud. If you want to learn more about other common tasks and how ACI radically simplifies network provisioning and operations, please watch the rest of the videos in this series. Thanks for watching.